Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, greetings from Turkey, Istanbul. So we are the last group of today, and we are Özgün University, as Terry says. Uh, first of all, thank you for this great opportunity, and please let us introduce ourselves. Uh, we are Team 128. My name is Volkan. I'm Mustafa. Ceren. Çelen. I'm Batuhan. So the thing is, we are uh, 128, and we will be calling our solution Portfolio 128 in the upcoming slides for your information. By the way, we call ourselves 915. We have a nickname that we have a story. For seven months, for every 915, we said that it's 915, let's have a great day and solve this problem because the problem by a given uh, principal company, we loved it and we made a progress. So. Uh, today we will be talking about the problem and the need itself. Then we will be talking about the data, its collection and preparation. Then we will be talking about the methodologies, the solution procedure. Then we will be uh, fo focusing on the KPIs, the result of the problem. Then we will be finalizing our solution. So uh, the problem itself, the problem has given by the principal company. So uh, in this case, we need to consider this fact. It is an institutional uh, it is an institutional funding strategy. So the principal company is holding large amount of money. So it's a serious, it's not an individual strategy. We need to consider this fact. So uh, our purpose is actually uh, creating an excess returns compared to the benchmark S&P 500 index. So also, we are actually making an efficient frontier here. We will be trying to minimize the trade-off between the risk and return. If I'm younger, I will be taking high risk, focusing on the high return, or, it, or the vice versa, low risk and low return. So how I'm going to do this is actually, we will be competing with the S&P 500 index, and we will be investing long only, fully invested, and diversified in terms of the, each the, these four factors. And also, we have an determined number of assets we need to consider, and we have to also decide how active, how, how we are following the benchmark in terms of the active or passive management. And finally, the principal company is saying that you should take a desired risk to attain more pro for uh, more uh, possible returns. So uh, let's talk about data. Thank you. I will be explaining the data specification part of our project. But before going into the details of the data specifications, it's important to say that understanding the data is very important for solving a complex business problem. Data is some kind of key for solution, and data includes some insights about the problem. So in our problem, we have two different kind of data. The first one is the time series input data, which includes information about the schedule codes, which is uh, identify, uh, which is, which is called as uh, identification number of the assets and alpha, beta, MCAP quantile, and sector values. And also we have benchmark weights in our uh, time series input data, and we have another uh, data which is return covariance matrices, which includes information about directional uh, directional relationship between distinct assets. And now. I will be explaining the data preparation part. Uh, to be able to solve the problem, uh, we need to design the time series input data because uh, it's a whole data and we need to separate them according to the dates, rebalance dates. And then uh, again, we need to uh, convert the return covariance values in a matrix form to be able to use in a computer environment. And uh, thirdly, we need to replace the set of codes with numbers, again, to be able to use in a, a computer environment. And lastly, uh, we assigned 11 different numbers to the sector values because of the computational easiness. And this is the 10-year uh, average of asset quantity per MCAP quantile graph. This graph is very important for us because, uh, as you can see, 50% of the uh, assets in uh, MCAP quantile 1 and MCAP quantile 2. Because of this situation, uh, we face some problems uh, in the solution process. Now, methodology is part. So, what was our objective function? And our objective function is minimizing the trade-off between risk and return, and you can see the color code part. And also, we have a lambda value, which is a tuning parameter to decide which dominant part of this objective function. 
And now we have a two decision variables. One of them is proportion of overall portfolio for each asset I, and also a DI value, which is an active weight, and you can calculate it with taking the difference between benchmark weight and the weight that we are assigning for each rebalance period. Now, as you all know, we are the last team, so you're all familiar with the 16-year constraint. So let's remember quickly, we have a long-only asset constraint, fully invested constraint, activate constraint, sector constraint, MCAP cool constraint, and the volatility constraint, which includes a beta value. And now the sophisticated part. Now we have three nonlinear constraints. First of all, we have a cardinal constraint which allows us to trackable management, to do a trackable management. And it's between 50 and 70. And also we have an active share constraint. Like Volcan said, we are deciding if we are passive management or doing passive management or an active management. And also we have a tracking error constraint which allows us to control error limits within these numbers. So while we are finding our solution methodologies, we have two key factors. One of them is satisfying the nine, all of the nine constraints, and one of them is solved in desired time, which means we need to solve each specific period by three to five minutes. So first solution method was partially exact solution. So we just gave 16-year constraint to Groby by using MATLAB interface, and we just saw what is the optimal, what, optimal function value for this objective function value for this problem. And also, now we are going to move on with relaxing the cardinality constraint. Relaxing means, uh, as you all know from the problem statement, we can only give above one basis value for each asset. That's why we just relax it. We can give any number in any asset, so we just see how the objective function behaves. And it is not satisfied for the ninth constraint, and also it is not sold in desired time. And now we have a gamma norm method, which includes alpha and beta values for one coefficient, and we are just deciding by that coefficient. And it doesn't satisfy our MCAP Q constraint. We are just giving too much in MCAP Q1 assets, and that's why we just eliminate it, and it's also not satisfied by the active share constraint. But wouldn't it be great if there is a solution that satisfies all of the constraints and also solved in desired time, which is our method, Grossman Solver. Gross means greedy, random, randomized, adaptive search procedure, and Solver came from the Groby Solver, now Grossman Solver. So our methodology consists of five steps. First, we send RSS to the Solver, which is Groby, with the multiple interface. Then we use the FS value. Why FS value? I mean, wouldn't it be great if we had a desirability criterion which we had the risk and return for each single asset in one single place? Well, this is what FS does because we utilize alpha, covariance measure values, and lambda in one single parameter for each single asset. Then we do dual weight allocations and we generate a lot of feasible solutions. From these feasible solutions, we select the one with the best objective value. So this is a bit complicated, so let's see the animation. First, we have all of our assets. We send them to solver and they are assigned their weights. Then we have their FS values. These FS values, okay, let's save it again. <laughs> so they're assigned their weights. Then, the FS values are generated. It evaluates the risk and return. These can be positive or negative. How we line them up is that we have the positive values in ascending order and then negative values in descending order, just like this. Then we only consider 250 assets because in one period we have approximately 500 assets. From these 250, we select one. What happens after this is that this FS creation procedure goes on 200 times until we have 200 uh, assets in the selected asset list. After this, what we do is that we select one from the selected asset list, and we select another asset from all of these assets. We do an incremental weight change between these two assets. <laughs> okay, this is fine. We do an incremental weight change. They're selected randomly from these uh, assets. Uh, sets. Then we do a constraint validation. If it's okay, we move on. If it's not, we go back to FS creation step. We generate a lot of feasible solutions like this. And from these solutions, we select the one with the best objective value. Great. 
Now to KPIs. Before we move on to KPIs, uh, let's check that. I would like to mention that S&P 500 does not satisfy the additional three constraints. So our portfolio 128 uh, satisfies all of the constraints. Uh, now our values. Our 10-year cumulative return is about 255, which is a good number for us. Our annual return is 13%. Uh, our annualized return uh, is 4%, which is good. Uh, we will we will taking some risk. Uh, our sharp ratio values are like this, but we would like to we are, we, are, we wondered that uh, how how is the interval of this sharp ratio and we add an additional KPI which is annualized sharp ratio as you can see it's almost same with the benchmark. Also, uh, we do not cons consider the turnover constraint in our solution method. So our, when we add the turnover cost, our turnover our ten year cumulative return decreases dramatically. So we saw that we need to handle this turnover constraint. It's an it's a must for us. Uh, also, the turnover amount is high because we are traveling almost 600 assets out of 731 assets, so we, we have a diversified portfolio. Uh, also, we, are, we want to follow the benchmark, as you can see, in, in terms of sectors and MKM quantiles. We are following the uh, benchmark. Also, we have, di we have differentiated from the benchmark, and also per, in terms of MKM quantile. We are following the benchmark and we also differentiate from benchmark. Now, why grasp and solve our method? All right. So, uh, finally, uh, we have understand the grasp, although there is a problem in the animation, but to summarize, we are actually offering a really low risk investment. It is 4% for analyzed tracking error. And then, actually, we are offering a really diversified portfolio. For 600 assets, we are looking for possible returns depending focusing on the alpha values. So it is diversification, right? So we are solving it in a desired time, less than three minutes. It's a necessity for understanding the time value of money, right? So the, we are also following the S&P 500 index, which is a profitable index when we look at it into it and for 10 years. And finally, we are offering you a, an, a trackable management because we are only having 50s in the number of assets. So that's the point we have come to, to this far. And we are really looking forward to future at this, at this stage. Because there is a transaction cost here we need to handle. So uh, we have made some approaches to decrease the transaction costs, and everything is going fine. And we are trying to get necessary feedbacks from the business side. Because this academy should be integrated with the business. because. Uh, there are several feedbacks that increase our solutions performance. And after we are increasing the academic side and making lots of research, research because we are a great team and we really love the problem itself, and we are, when we come back, we will be continuing to proceed our solution. And we, will, we need to make lots of practice because, our, as you see, our solution has come with the iterative way because at first we tried to solve it exact then relaxing the cardinality then the gamma normalization at the finally grasp so the practice will increase the solution and the uh, quality of business too and then when we face a new problem or new constraint or anything we will start this process again in an agile way so we are really glad to be here and we have come to the land of opportunities and we are all sharing an American dream here, so <laughs> that's the point, and we, we are really, uh, we, we love this team, 128, as you see, and the nickname is 915, so if you have further questions, we are really glad and pleasant to answer it. Thank you very much.